Hey, what is up guys? My name is Eric and in today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to use the switch statement in C++. Let's do this. Okay, so in the last tutorial, I taught you about the if else else if else statements to check the user's input with several conditions. And if all else fails, the else statement would run, which is an optional add-on to the if else else if statement if you wanted to. Now, what makes the switch statement similar to the if else else if else statement is the fact that they both can check a user's input with several scenarios. And then based on the scenario that matches the input, a certain piece of code will run. Otherwise, the else statement or something equivalent to it in a switch statement called a default statement will run a certain type of code instead. So to get a better understanding of how this works, let's first start off by looking into the switch statements syntax. To create a switch statement, this is what you do. Type in the word switch followed by a pair of parentheses and a pair of curly brackets. Now, inside the parentheses, instead of putting a conditional statement, which you would normally do in a loop and an if else condition, is this time you would put in a variable. And what variable you might ask? It's a variable that you want to check its values or value. Okay, so inside the curly brackets, you would put your case statements. And the case statements is basically equivalent to your else if conditional checks. However, the difference between case statements and else if conditionals is that in a conditional statement, you get to check ranges and other types of logic. However, in a switch statements case, you can only check the value stored in that variable. So check values stored in variable. And then you end it off with a colon. If you don't understand this so far, just keep watching and you'll eventually get the point once I start working on the simple example to show you the switch statement in action. So once the case statement is created, you type in your statements to run if the case matches the scenario, semicolon, and then follow it off by a break to end the case statement. And if you have more than one cases, you would keep on repeating the same pattern. So basically case again, check another value stored in variable, followed by a colon, and then statements to run if this case matches the scenario, semicolon, and then a break to end it off. And then let's say all of the cases that you defined do not match the value stored in the variable. In that scenario, what you want to do is to create a default statement. A default statement is basically equivalent to a if else else if statements is else condition. So that means if all else fails in the case scenarios, run the statements in here if all else fails and then break. That's basically it. So to put this concept into practice, let's create a program that will accept a user's letter grade. And then depending on which letter grade was inputted, the program will check and see out whether the grade is pass or a fail. So in this case, let's create a variable that will store our user's grade. So let's create a character of grade. So the reason why we didn't choose a string and chose a character instead is because a character stores a single letter and that's all we really need. We don't need to store words, phrases, or sentences. And besides, a string is basically an array of characters. Now let's see out some instructions so our users will know what to do. So see out, please enter your letter grade. And then C in grade. Okay, now that we have that set up, we need some way to check. Well, before we go any further, some of you might already notice. What if the user enters a capital letter or perhaps a lowercase letter? Wouldn't that matter? In fact, yes, it would. So in order to cover that scenario, let's include another library. And this library will allow us to convert all letters to uppercase or lowercase or another type of form. So this is the library we would want to include. So include C type dot H. So in this case, we're going to choose to lowercase all of the user's input. So then it's less code for us to type in the case statement, because if we don't do that, then we would have to create a case for capital letters and lowercase letters, which is too much typing to do. And it'll take up too much space for our program. Okay. So as we said, before inside the parentheses for the switch statement is the variable we want to check the value. In this case, it's the grade. Now to use the C type library functions to lowercase the grade input, what we would do is type in front of it to lowercase. Actually it's too lower and then put the grade in parentheses. 
And what this does is it will take whatever the user's input that is stored in grade and make it lowercase. So if the user types in a capital A, to lower will make that capital A into lowercase, and then the switch statement will check against the lowercase value. So in this case, let's create our first case statement. And that is case, it's lowercase a, colon, then C out, excellent, you passed, and then break. And then let's do a case statement for the letter B. Let's see out, great job, you passed. And let's create another case for C, D, and F. So C, C out, good job, good job, you passed. And then break. Oh, it looks like I forgot a break for the letter B as well. And then let's do case D, C out. Please try again. You failed. And then break. And then finally case F. C out. Oh no. You failed. And then finally, for a default statement, we could include it in our program. However, it's optional. But just to be extra sure, we want to avoid the user from crashing our program in case he or she enters a letter grade that is not A, B, C, D, or F. So in that case, we would include the default statement just to be safe. So C out, please enter a valid letter grade. End line. Okay, so let's run this program and see what it does. Okay, so as you can see, our program successfully compiled and it asks us, please enter your letter grade. In this case, let's give it a capital A. It should give us excellent. So enter. As you can see, it shows excellent. You passed. Now let's test the other conditions. Let's say the letter B, capital this time. It shows good job. You passed. And that shows in case B. And that, that means our lowercase function is working. Now let's check a lowercase condition of letter C, lowercase c, enter. As you can see, it shows good job, you passed. And if we were to do lowercase b, it also shows great job, you passed. And finally, let's do a capital D. It shows please try again, you failed. And let's check for F. So let's do capital F. Oh no, you failed. Please enter a valid grade. Hmm. Oh, I see what I did wrong here. I forgot to add a break statement after the letter F. So if we were to try that again and enter the grade F in capital, it shows, oh no, you failed. And then finally, let's give it an input that is not A, B, C, D, or F. Let's say E, lowercase, enter. As you can see, please enter a valid grade is displayed because none of our case statements shows the letter E. However, if we were to add a case statement of case E, then let's see. What are you thinking will be the output? And then don't forget the breaks statement. Now that we added the E scenario, if we were to cap type in capital E, it shows what are you thinking? So if we were to remove the E case scenario, it would display the default statement again, which is please enter a valid letter grade. So let's do capital E again. As you can see, it shows please enter a valid letter grade. Perfect. So as you can see, our program works just as we expected it to do. And that concludes our tutorial on how to create a switch statement in C++. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and please like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to stay tuned for more. See you next time. Bye-bye.